Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the CBL X's and O's podcast for season 2023. I've got Beck McIntyre from the Horsham Hornets joining me today, and we are sitting down to preview what was a bigger round five in the Southwest Conference. And we had some undefeated teams lose. We've had some teams that weren't on the winner's list get on the winner's list. It's been a bit of an up and down weekend, hasn't it, Beck? Yes, it definitely has. And um, some teams get their first win, I think, which is exciting for a lot of those um, those towns as well. So, yeah, it's definitely um, been an interesting weekend. Let's start off in the men. And we had Hamilton get their first win by a staggering 15 points over Ararat at home. Yeah, that would have been um, would have been amazing for them. It looked like Josh Miller had another great weekend. He's had 26 points. Um, they've had a couple of other people, Sam Brewer, we've definitely said his name before in the scorers with 10 and Matthew Parker, by the look of it with 11. So, um, they've, um, just about got most of their people on their list with the score. So I reckon that would have been a pretty big celebration there that night for Hamilton. And Warnable traveled to Tarang and were able to walk out of Tarang with the W and Harry McGorm shooting 21 caused the to- tornado some issues. Yeah, well, um, that's a yeah, that's a that's a big win, I think. Um, especially, you know, with Tarang, um, you know, coming out, I think, and having higher expectations, and that's a big, big margin. I would have thought it's probably a bit bigger than what I would have expected, but um, yeah, there's obviously been some good performances there. And Horsham had the SA road trip this weekend, and. They got out of South Australia with two big wins and they kept their undefeated streak alive. Um, Aussie McKenzie shooting 22 on Saturday night against the Lakers uh, probably made the the job a little bit easier for the Hornets. Yeah, look, they um they played very well and they were obviously very happy to come out with two from two. That doesn't happen very often when you do the SA road trip. So, um, yeah, I know Scotty, the coach, was um was very happy with that. But I did watch the game and I don't think they necessarily played their best game on Saturday night. So they did come out with the win, but it wasn't pretty. Sunday was a much better game and they definitely um backed it up and improved on a lot of things. But yeah, Aussie's having a great season. He's a massive force for them and um he's just proving really hard to stop, I think. And Millicent hosted Portland Saturday night and were able to get the W and, you know, Jack Haggett, Jackson Bowden doing their scoring prowess as we've seen throughout the season. And they, they still let Nathan Hardingham score 27 and, but we're still able to win. Yeah. Interesting that um, obviously Hardingham was at his best, but Portland weren't able to get that win, but Having a look, other than Brad Clark, who had 22, there's not much else help with the depth of the scoring there. So um, potentially they might have had a couple out, Portland, because they've obviously had a cracking start to the season. So I can't imagine maybe um, Hayden, the coach, being potentially that happy with that. He probably would have expected that to be a bit um, bit the other way. But it looks like, yeah, um, they've just they've just come out and um, Millicent's um, had a bit of an upset there, I think, because Portland have obviously had a really good start. They sure have. And then Sunday, uh, Colac were able to get their first victory at home. They they took on Tarang and ran out nine point winners. And it hasn't probably been the best weekend for Tarang. They 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 had two winnable games uh, this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it is it is hard to back up a Sunday when you come off a, a big loss like that on a Saturday night. So, yeah, I mean, credit to them that they've still been able to show up on Sunday and, you know, put towards a pretty good game. Obviously, nine points is nothing, as we know. So, yeah, Colac would be pretty excited, though, I'd imagine, to have their first win of the season at home. And Horsham finished off the road trip in Millicent, running out nearly 20-point victors. And, Again, Jackson Bowden and Jack Haggett appearing in the top scorers, but, you know, Aussie McKenzie shooting 27 caused a lot of damage for the Magic. Yeah, look, um, the other person who caused a lot of damage in that game was Cody Bryant. So um, Cody is, you know, six foot six athletic 
you know, plays above the rim super quick. Um, and he just absolutely dominated yesterday. He was exceptional. Um, you know, we had a couple of a couple of people off the bench. Matt Brown come up and he played really well. He had 30 points. Mitch Martin, 16. So, um, yeah, they just played a much better brand of basketball yesterday. Their brand is to push the ball up the floor really quick, super athletic types of players. So, um, yeah, they were, they were really good yesterday. And, and that obviously showed with the 20-point um, win. And we'll take a quick look at the ladder now uh, in the men. And Horsham still sitting on top, 5-0 and record, undefeated. Uh, but, you know, nipping at their heels is Portland with a 4-2 and two record now. I don't think them two teams have played each other just yet. So it'd be interesting to see when the Horsham-Portland matchup uh, happens to see where them two teams are at against each other. We've then got Millicent, who have played a whopping nine games already, sitting third with a 6-3 and three record. And Mount Gambia rounding out the top four, uh, playing five games with a 3-2 and two record. Uh, then we've got Waterball Ararat sitting on a 2-3 record. Can't split them at the moment. Uh, and then Colac, Hamilton and Terang rounding out the, the bottom of the ladder. So the men's ladder is starting to take a little bit of shape. We still don't have, I guess, enough games in there to start talking about who's going to be matching up in finals and who's contending for the top four, because at, at the moment, all teams still, still have a touching point with the top four. They're still not halfway through the season. So uh, it's an interesting bit of a ladder there. And, you know, Millicent playing the nine games is they're, they're shaping up to, to be holding a top four spot at the moment, aren't they Beck? Yeah, look, and um, I think it'll be a good cracking game. With a, we've got Hamilton this weekend at home, but then next weekend we've got the Warrnambool Portland Road Trip. So by the end of that weekend, we should have had everyone play everyone. And so that will then obviously give us at least that kind of first round of who's won against who. Obviously, some have played each other twice, but um, I would expect it to be a pretty close game against our men in Portland. I think they're definitely panning out to be the top two teams and Millicent's just there and, you know, Mount Gambia, you just, you know, are always going to be there as well. So, um, yeah, it does beg to be a really interesting end to the way it's all going to roll out. And let's just have a quick look at the women. We had you guys, Horsham, going on your SA road trip and you couldn't do what the men did and go with a 2-0. and You had to split it. Um, and on Saturday night, Mount Gambia got the better of you guys and got their first win. But sounds like you were down a little bit in personnel on Saturday night. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, it's not an excuse, but we did have only six players um, that were available Saturday night. We had three people away. So we picked up a couple. We picked up three more for our Sunday game. So, um, look, it was a great game, highly contested, very close. We we actually were down by 15 at one stage. So my girls did really well to claw it back. Um, you know, they they were tough. They, they had some consistent shooters. They had really nice shooters from the three-point line. They actually... Um, just about delivered our win just solely from the three-point line. Um, but yeah, look, we we just were unlucky to miss out. We had a girl fouled out with three minutes to go. So we were playing with five. Most of those five had already played 40 minutes. So anyway, they did well. They dug deep and, and did their best. But I think it'll be a good game when Mount Gambia comes back over to us on the ninth. I think we hopefully might see that reversed, fingers crossed. And Millicent hosted Portland uh, and, you know, that, that's a bit of a a really good win for Portland right here. You know, that's 27 points, I think, if my calculations are right. And that was Millicent's first uh, loss for the season. And it's a really good win there by the Coasters. Yeah, look, and having a look with Alana Strom being back in, and I know we've talked a lot about Alana. Um, it's kind of like the Alana fan club, but um, she's really tall and can jump really well and fantastic defender. She's a previous defender of the year in the league. So um, I'm just not sure there would have been many people that could have matched her after seeing the Millicent team just with height. So um, it looks like she's had a great game. Um, and, you know, defensively, she would have been just hard to get through the key um, out with her arms up. So uh, whenever she's in the team, she just gives that extra dimension to Portland and, and they are really the team to beat, I think. And um, so I'll look forward to, um, playing them and um, yeah, but they've got consistent people, Millie, Tyler, you know, Summer, they're all putting up regular, regular stats. So um, yeah, I think they've got a big long list and lots of depth it looks like. So it was a good win for Portland. And Sunday, you guys backed it up um, 
and got got the win over Millicent to to make your weekend one and one, and that's a really big win for you guys, uh, especially with it being nine points. It's uh, it gives you that advantage at the moment in the head to head, and Millicent have had a uh, a disastrous weekend with their two losses over the weekend, their first two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's probably not often that they have days where they walk out of their stadium, um, you know, with multiple losers over losses over a weekend. So, look, it was a really great win for my girls. They dug deep when they needed to, and we did pick up three more players. So instead of having six, we had nine. And, and that just obviously on a um, backup on a Sunday game is good, especially when a lot of the, you know, six or five have actually played most of the game before the night before. So, um, yeah, we were very happy with that. And, um, you know, we had our regular um our regular shooters put really good scores up, but we had our new recruit tomorrow in for the first time. So she was able to put another dimension to our team, just allowing our um, our other point guard to come off the point and be able to be in a shooting position. So to see then Liv put up nearly 20 on the um, scoreboard was purely just a reflection of that. So for us, um, yeah, we had a great game. We, yeah, we fought hard and, and come home with a win, which was, yeah, very good. And we'll just take a quick look at the women's ladder. And I don't believe it's changed at all after this round. We've got Horsham still sitting on top with a two and one record now instead of that undefeated record. We've got Millicent sitting second again, four and two. They had an undefeated record coming into the round. Third is Portland with a two and two. Warrnambool is fourth, one and one. And then we've got Mount Gambier with their first win sitting at one and two in fifth and Colac. Still haven't got a win yet sitting in at 0-2, but, um, you know, again, similar to the men, this this ladder isn't really taking shape just yet. Um, still lots of basketball to be played, but, you know, Millicent playing the the six games so far and the four wins, they're, they're showing that they're going to be part of that probably top four come the end of the season at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, look, I think it probably is similar with a lot of the female teams. Like I know with mine is that, you know, we're just low on numbers. So if there's a couple away, then it does dramatically affect the depth. And I know a couple of the weekends I've got coming up, we've got two or three away. So, um, you know, it's really hard to see how that pans out when you do have those um, unavailabilities. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it is what it is and you just got to go with what you've got on the night. But yeah, look, I think it's really just fighting for that top four, isn't it? There's just two teams that are going to miss out here. So um, head to head is probably going to make a big difference come the end of the season. It sure will. Head to head will pay a massive impact, whether it is on uh, making the top four or whether it's hosting that home home final for the top two spots. So that is our round five preview for the Southwest Conference this week. And um Look forward to jumping on a call with you later this week, Beck. When we get to review, when we get to preview, sorry, round uh, six, but um, it's a little bit small in round six, so that might be uh, a very quick one. So, look forward to chatting to you 